Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and I'm barely awake because I had to take two Benadryl because I got stung by a bee today. Never been stung in my entire life, but since I'm allergic to everything else, I was like, yeah, I better than I jumped on a call with somebody to, you know, make sure I don't die. So I've still got people checking in on me like every 15 minutes, but uh, yeah, I, I already should be carrying an EpiPen because of another allergy that can kill me instantly, but that shit's expensive. So I just don't. Benadryl's almost as good, right? So anyway, I'm not even all here of this video, but uh, I, I'm going to keep it brief because if I go into detail, it'll get demonetized anyway, and I need money after last week's demonetize-a-thon. So wizards firing two artists, uh, not, not really firing their contractors, but they're ending their business relationship. One's Therese Nielsen and one is Noah Bradley. Let's start with Noah. He was accused by multiple women of doing bad things at industry like events, like artist events, probably card events, you know, other stuff he draws for or whatever. He would specifically go after like young women aspiring artists and he even had, I guess, business cards with him like partially or fully nude on them. Like this guy's your typical like obnoxious never grew up since middle school bro dude. Just Mr. Macho, oh look at me and how much I like women. Oh look at me, I'm, I'm the guy who's scoring all the women at the bars. And then when it doesn't work because he's such an obnoxious douche, he like tries to get really forceful apparently. So once again, in my opinion, I don't have an exact time scale, but from what I'm hearing, hello, why didn't the first victims come out? It's like a Harvey Weinstein thing again. You're going to say I'm victim blaming, but at a certain point, if you let this go on for even more than like a week without getting your shit together, reporting it and ruining somebody's career, guess what? If nobody knows about their reputation, they're going to keep doing it. Just like Harvey Weinstein, they're going to keep doing it. So if you're a first victim and you said nothing because, oh, you're scared. What if people don't believe me? What are, yeah, tough situations happen in life. You got to get through them. You got to do the right thing. I got sympathy for victims of crimes, but at the same time, pepper spray is $10. And also, bad people need to be stopped. You can't just let them walk away. Have you never seen Spider-Man? I don't know if it's just me, but I'm the aggressive type that'll throw somebody right under a bus seconds after they've wronged me. I'm a big believer in like societal pressure, social pressure, and like the chilling effect because that's how like communities self-regulate. The more you make a big spectacle and a big like attack mob and, and like basically burning at the stake of somebody because they did something bad, the more people like them think, oh, that could be me. I should probably change. Now, does it sound like I'm supporting cancel culture and SGW overreactions to everything? Yes, but I'm not. I never said they're right most of the time or that they're accurate or attacking the correct person. But for people who, like Noah, went on Twitter and admitted what he did, well, there you go. Like, <laughs> if you throw him under the bus and run him over a couple times, guess what? There's going to be less Noah Bradleys in the world. You know what I mean? Because it hits the news, it hits social media, people hear about it, and people are like, oh, I've been acting like that. That could be me. I could have no career, and every time somebody Googles my name, they'll get this, and my life will be basically over. Yeah, maybe I should stop. That's basically, like, the fundamental way that the entire Justice Department works in the U.S., is the chilling effect. The don't be bad or this could be you effect. So I 100% support certain internet attack mobs when they've got the right target in their sights. You know, it's controversial as that might sound. Too bad SJWs like to cry wolf a lot. They like to see stuff where it's not even there and just manufacture drama and nonsense. Not to mention the whole Me Too false claims thing where it's like, I'm mad at this person, so I'm going to make up something because there's basically no, uh, no, no consequences. Except for, oh, filing a false police report or whatever. Oh, no. Might have to go on probation for a month. Oh, no. So apparently Noah's been a piece of human garbage for years and I, nobody blew the lid off it. Until now, I guess, and a lot of his friends and obviously his victims knew about it, but uh, he had, like, tried to apologize and work it out with them separately, I guess. I don't know many of the details, but he he's just an absolute piece of garbage. Uh, he posted a statement on Twitter that really reinforces that, like, basically everything and more that people are saying about him is true. He says, I'm sorry. I was terrible to women. I prayed on them. I ceaselessly hit on them. I pressured them into things. Yes, I'm editing this in real time. Uh, I got too drunk and did all manner of dumb things. Yes, I was one of those crappy, creepy predators you hear about. I was effing awful. So that's the intro written by him. You kind of get it. He's like, yeah, okay, you know, I got caught. And people said um, that the whole letter that he wrote struck them as, oh, I'm mad that I got caught. I didn't get that vibe from it, but I did get the vibe of like, oh, this is me throwing myself under the bus 101. Yeah, we're all on the same team now. Even I admit I'm a bad person. And, you know, I don't think he even said I'm going to change in the future. I think he kind of hinted at it. I don't know. When you're a bad person doing bad things for this long, I, I at that point, I hope your whole career is over permanently. I get it that people can change, 
I just don't believe it. Usually people like to just wait enough time and say they changed. It's not the norm for somebody to actually change who they are at a basic level when they've like grown up and acted this way for their whole adult life. So people are like, don't dogpile at him. We don't need another internet cancel culture dogpile. No, we kind of do. When you're this much of a douchebag for this many years and have that many victims in your wake, you know, screw this guy. Screw any, screw his like parents for raising such a piece of shit. Anybody who was complacent with his behavior, knew about it, didn't say anything, just didn't try to stop him. Just anybody vaguely responsible for this whole situation, screw you. You know, like it, it's that bad of a situation. Like, if I'm walking down the street one day and somebody comes up with a gun and tries to steal my wallet, and then after I give it to him, still fires a couple shots at me, misses, and then I pull a bullet in their head, would I show up to their funeral specifically to punch their parents in the face for raising such a piece of human garbage? Yes, I would. Why, why would anybody not? Sometimes a person and what they did is so bad that everyone responsible needs to have some consequences. So whoever raised him without any respect for women, screw you, you're responsible. Any victims who didn't come forward initially so that he stops doing it and gets caught, you're responsible. Anyone who heard about or saw him personally being a jerk to women and being an aggressive, pushy piece of human garbage, and you didn't immediately write him up on social media and spread it everywhere, you're responsible. We need this to stop happening. We need a grand total of zero Noah Bradleys in our society. And also, seriously, ladies, carry pepper spray. Oh, and uh, thanks, Noah, for blacking out your Twitter profile to show that you definitely support treating all humans equally. <laughs> and with respect and dignity, it really means a lot coming from you. It's definitely not just to get woke points and follow the crowd. Anyway, let's move on to Therese Nielsen. This is going to piss everybody off. I'll warn you right now. In fact, I'll start with the part that'll probably make you happy. Yeah, SJW bullshit witch hunt saying, oh, she made anti-trans statements or she she hit like on a tweet that was clearly anti-trans. It clearly wasn't. It was like literally about helping trans people, if I remember correctly. It was so blown out of proportion by the typical like paranoid SJW hate mob. She didn't deserve any of those statements. The whole, oh, she's anti-trans, she's anti-trans. First of all, she's a lesbian. She is literally married to a woman. I found that to be a questionable target for, for the SJWs, but, you know, they've been known to turn on their own. And honestly, it's just an example of nothing's ever good enough for these people. They just want to screech and yell at anybody on the internet and attack anybody because they're so superior and they want to just have, look, look at how bad this person is, look at how good I am for calling them out. It doesn't matter if it's true or not. And that's why SGWs like to constantly cry wolf. And that's why when I heard this, I'm like, oh, it's probably bullshit. I literally didn't even look into it for like a year and a half. I was like, yeah, there's makeup up stuff about Therese. It's probably all fluff. I support her 100%. Then I looked into what she actually did. Holy shit. She 100% deserved to get fired. It's just, yeah, it's unfortunate about the bullshit made up, you know, accusations about her being anti-trans and this other, you know, misinterpreted, exaggerated bullshit. But that's what SGWs do. I'm not surprised. But at the end of the day, she followed InfoWars on Twitter, which I mean, is that an endorsement? Does everybody I follow on Twitter, does that mean I'm 100% in favor of what they're doing? Or am I just interested in what they have to say so that I can, you know, say the exact opposite? Kind of like a know your enemy thing. Like it, it, a, a follow on Twitter is not an endorsement. It's that simple. Until you're Therese and you're dumb enough to come out and admit it. So people really started looking into like what the hell she's doing online when she hit like on a tweet that if I were to summarize it was basically the Jews are terrible and they took over the government. And people were like, why would you hit like on that? Like even some edgy, you know, 20 year old content creator who does it ironically because their fans will think it's funny or like an activist hitting likes so that it shows up in their feed and then people can like dogpile on and be like, screw you, you anti-Semitic piece of shit. Like a follow is a follow, a like is a like, you can't really draw a lot of conclusions, but people are starting to kind of ask her questions slash attack her over it. And her response wasn't, oops, I misclicked. It wasn't, I hit favorite because they don't really have a save option on Twitter and bookmarking doesn't work very well. It was basically, yeah, yeah, I follow InfoWars. Yeah, I hit like on this tweet. I'm used to people not liking me, my family attacking me, everybody turning on me because of my beliefs. Okay, if you're not familiar with InfoWars, anybody who reads their bullshit, you are almost too stupid for like you to exist. Like, you would think the universe would be like, there's a glitch in, in the Matrix here with human intelligence versus how dumb you would have to be to read anything on that f***ing website. I mean, just, oh, the governments are going to put chips in the vaccines and the vaccines cause autism and chemtrails are turning all the crops gay. That's InfoWars. They have 
zero journalistic standards. And, you know, once in a while, somebody will link me to something like, hey, this is an actual expose written by a respectable person. This, you know, it's interesting to see a counterpoint on this. Like, maybe 25% of their content, it's like, okay, yeah, they're they're calling it out. They're going against the mainstream media with their bullshit bias and their constant lies. Cool. But the other 75% is batshit crazy. It is 55-year-old paranoid dumbass Karen on Facebook Central. Th this is like, I think it's owned by Alex Jones, which that guy's batshit crazy. He will say anything to get views, whether he personally believes it or not. He's Mr. Like, oh, they're all actors and this shooting never happened guy. Like, this guy is a miserable piece of human garbage. And he owns the site. He controls most of the content on it. I mean, right now they have a statement made by the family of the woman who portrayed Aunt Jemima saying, hey, we don't want to remove, we don't want that history erased, we don't think it's racist, here's our take on it. Okay, and then we've got Bill Gates is trying to genetically change the content of Africa and wipe out certain races and he's the new Hitler and the government is controlling the weather. And don't forget about what's happening at that pizza restaurant. I mean, it's just, the, the whole website should just be written off as unreliable and batshit crazy. Even if they post an occasional article, that's a good point because half the time you can't even trust their journalistic integrity because they have none. But she follows them and she's into this, you know, far right conspiracy bullshit. Apparently she basically admitted it. So there you go. I mean, she probably thinks the damn earth is flat. If I found out at some fictional company I own, some big, you know, public facing company, that an employer contractor was way into Infowars and was into all, all this conspiracy shit, I'd fire him on the spot. I wouldn't go and knowingly purposely misinterpret other tweets they've made in the past to make them look even worse and absolutely bury them and exaggerate and make up evidence and shit. But you know, at the end of the day, people that stupid with that poor of judgment don't need to work anywhere near me or my customers or really just get that toxic person the hell out of the company. So I 100% support Therese Nielsen's firing from Wizards of the Coast. These crazy conspiracy nut people who make all conservatives look bad, f*** these people, and she's one of them. Or at the very least, her non-apology statement, which is now deleted, so I had to get secondhand summary accounts of it, never tried to address that, that anything anybody said was false, never gave an excuse. She was just like, yeah, people don't like me for my beliefs. Oh well. Okay, then we're on the same page now. So everything everybody thought about you was true and uh, okay. She's still not anti-trans though. I don't care what anybody says. That's just manufactured bullshit. But yeah, you start taking the crazy pills and you lose your job. What else is new? I mean, stupid people have stupid things happen to them. Oh, not to mention to, uh, to circle the bus back around again in case you forgot, her basically stance that the Jews are evil and taking over the world. That's a fireable offense right on its face, ignoring anything about InfoWars. I don't care what these ignorant races say. Spaceballs was the best movie ever, all right? So, uh, yeah, people are all mad that, oh, the SJW attack mobbed her and made up stuff about, you know, trans stuff that she didn't really say. Yes, but at the end of the day, she's an anti-Semitic racist piece of shit conspiracy-believing nutcase. So if you think the whole, oh, Watsy treated her bad and manufactured evidence makes up for the fact that, like, she probably wants all the Jews in the world dead? Mm, I don't think it quite offsets. I, I really don't. Call me crazy. So now that I looked into it, I am 100% not on her side at all. Assuming it's all true because she's never come out and made a statement that I saw publicly that said, no, it's all a misunderstanding. This is why I like this tweet. This is why I follow InfoWars. It's all a misunderstanding. N never seen anything like that. She basically read between the lines, confirmed it in her non-apology statement. I think the verdict is, is ready on this one. So yeah, anybody who's like, no, still support her. It's not a my team versus your team. She's on team conservative and, and SGWs are evil. So uh, that's it. You got to look at every case on a case by case, person by person basis. Okay. And in this case, I think we've got enough evidence to reach a verdict. So uh, hopefully she can stop being such a crazy person. Go get a job somewhere else. But Noah Bradley, I hope he never works again. Honestly, hope that he can't get a job anywhere after anybody Googles his name or that anywhere he appears to be working for, people just flood it with, hey, did you know he's a serial woman abusing piece of human crap? And then loses that job to the point where he's homeless because then at least if he's homeless, he won't be at bars hitting on women. The more bad things that happen to him as consequences for his own purposeful chosen ongoing actions, the more people hear about it and the less new Noah Bradleys we have to hear about. Because once again, the chilling effect. The social pressure that, hey, this is not okay, look at this person, don't do this. So yeah, screw that guy. So uh, if this video hurt your feelings and you disagree with it, uh, the button for that is right next to the thumbs up button. So uh, hit it and f*** off. Otherwise, leave a big old like on this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next video.